Hey guys, my name is Fape and welcome to the first episode of season 2 of Banished. And as I told you, this season is gonna be a modded version of Banished. So, first I planned on using all these different kinds of mods here and I installed them all, I tried them out and I loaded up a game and I thought, ah, uh, it's still very much like vanilla. There are a few more crops and just very few buildings added and I decided no I think we need a bigger difference. We are gonna start a mod pack and by far the biggest mod pack known for Banished is the Colonial Charter and the newest version is called Excellent Adventure and there's tons of new content. So we're gonna play Colonial Charter in the second season of Banished. And I also have one other mod, Seasons FX. It's supposed to add a few more um, graphical effects to the different seasons of Banished. I haven't had the time to check those out, but I, the mod works together with Colonial Charter. So I'm gonna try that out. And we're gonna start a new map. I thought a little bit about it. So, last town was called the Ironstone Mine. This time we're gonna call it Ironstone City, because we are moving on. That's not a... Oh, it's a keyboard again. Ah, okay. Got it, got it. Don't worry. We are gonna play, so there are a few more map types that uh, Colonial Charter mod adds and I decided to go with Lake Waters because I think it could be very interesting. We're gonna play with a very large terrain size because last time we almost came upon our limit of map size. So it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have a fair climate. I don't feel up to the challenge of a harsh climate quite yet. And we're gonna have medium starting to, uh, conditions just to get into the whole um, city building theme a little faster. Of course, the disasters are gonna be on to make it a little more interesting. And guys, let's go. Here we are in our brand new world. As you always already can see, there are tons of new icons that are added uh, with this Colonial Charter mod pack. And if you're new to the series, I highly recommend to check out at least the first few episodes of the first season, just so you guys get a feel for the basic banished uh, gameplay and what you have to um, pay attention to when you are building up a town. Because we are gonna get right into it. I read a lot of banished stuff again. A lot of people have do, done experiments. I w looked a little bit after the numbers. Um, we Last time we used uh, certain numbers that I believe were very efficient. This time we're gonna adjust those numbers a little bit and try out a little bit of new stuff. But let's take a look at the map. One thing I totally forgot about last time is this handy tool. We have a mini map. I'm gonna put it up here on the right. And this shows us very nicely our map and I can just travel around way faster like that. So we are gonna locate it right next to a few mountains which are gonna be very helpful for the mines later on. We have a lake here which will, we will have to use for a trading post and hopefully fishing docks. We have lots of space as you can see. We are not as restricted as in the valley map. So we can have lots of farms and crop fields here. And other very important stuff. There are a few changes to the terrain at some points yeah you can see there's like reeds in the river they are just um, visual effects so they don't actually have an effect uh, but there is a new type of tree so first of all we have trees on the mountains which is really nice makes the land look a little less bare I'm trying to find this new forest type and it looks pretty similar but it has basically taller trees can't see it right now. Maybe it's just too similar and I, I can't distinguish it. But it is supposed to be very good for gatherers because mushrooms and um, mushrooms and roots and similar things have a higher spawn rate. I think this might be one. Maybe not too sure. We'll we'll have take a closer look at that uh, later. First of all, we need to start again, all over again. And it has been, it has been a couple of months since I started a Banished game from scratch. So this is going to be a very, very interesting phase that we have to do. We have to go back, look at all these different road types too. Um, we have uh, stone bridges now. And yeah, brick roads is new. But we're going to start with a plain old dirt road. We're going to play the vanilla game at least for the first couple of years, I suppose, before we get into the modded content too much. But it will definitely spruce up our late game by quite a bit. So what we need in the beginning is definitely a good food source and also some houses 
and a forester's lodge would be very helpful too. And uh, it's gonna take some time to, to settle in. But first of all, let's get our menu straight here. We need our overview in the corner, of course. We need our logs of events. We had it down here last time, so I think I'm used to that by now. So let's do that again. And we need our profession. We have a few more professions, as you can see, too. Uh, let's see. Ale wench, baker, beekeeper, bootlegger, brewer. No, we had brewers before. Brick maker, butcher, uh, chandler. Charcoal burner, curer, lots of new monks, millers, <laughs> preservers, presser, roper, sailor. Man, which of these, which of these jobs were here before? Seems like there are so many new ones. It's crazy. So there's definitely a lot more new stuff to learn. But let's start with the basics. We are going to need a good old crop field. And last season I went with a. Uh, good old 11 by 11 design this season I'm gonna go a little bigger we have more space and also it should be more efficient if it's done correctly we are going with a 15 by 15 size with which by the way is the max size in the vanilla game as you can see in the modded version you can go way bigger than that 30 by 30 double the size that's too big we're gonna make 15 by 15 we're gonna have two laborers Instead of the one labor we had in the beginning of last time here. So 15 by 15 is gonna be our size for now. Let's put a road along the side. And as you already know, I put it a lot closer to the initial barn than last time. But that's okay. We can shift our city center further away later. It's not that important to, um, to figure out where to do everything right in the beginning. We're gonna start with the standard wooden house. There are tons of variations of houses. Now look at this. Large residence. Look at it. Crazy, isn't it? So we can house a lot more people in those. But the best way to start is... What do you need for those? Log cabins? Oh, that's rope, right. I think that's rope. We're gonna start with a good old-fashioned wooden house. And we're actually gonna build two of them right here. And we also... Let, let's let them start working, shall we? We are in one times the speed, so we can't mess up too badly. Um, for now, we're gonna keep it at one times. Of course, we're gonna speed it up a little later. But for now, that should be fine. Let's build a forester. Look at all this. Is, that's so crazy. It's a lot of new stuff that we have to learn. But I think a forester is over here. Forester's Lodge. And I read a little bit of, uh, about that. And it is way more efficient to build an initial forester's lodge right next to where you're actually where you're actually starting off. I think I'm gonna build it down here. So it doesn't really interfere with the crop fields. But at the same time, there is a little bit of mountain range, but I think it should be it should be fine. It needs to be very, very close to the initial barn and the initial stockpile, so it's more efficient. That should definitely help. What else is it we are gonna need? I mean, these guys are gonna be busy for a while. Let's put some builders in here. Houses are being built fast. We need, of course, a wooden house down here next to the Forester's Lodge. And we also need a woodcutter. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make it very efficient right from the get-go. We're gonna put a small little stockpile Right here, five by three. Let's do it on the other side. Let's put it like right here. Let's make it three by five. And we're gonna build a woodcutter right next to this guy. So, are you a woodcutter? Yes, you are. By the way, there are also more efficient woodcutters in the game now, which is also very helpful. And this way, oh. You know what? We're gonna make it a little different. Let's remove the structure again and build it on the other side. Because, of course, we need to uh, bring all this this cut wood up here to our barn and to this um, stockpile. So I think it makes more sense to build a woodcutter further up, closer to the actual, to the actual um, living quarters of the farmers. Which is gonna... I think I'm gonna extend my farms up here. Look at this! 
Red leafed trees? Are those... Are those maples? I'm not sure. Purple trees, really, really cool. That's gonna be very, very nice. Alright, but that's the start. That's how we're gonna do it. The barn is pretty close to the to the crop fields. The houses are pretty close, so I'm not too worried about their efficiency yet. However, three houses should be enough to handle our people for now. But as we move along, of course, we'll have to build plenty more houses. And I'm still not entirely sure. I think it is better to spread out the houses a little more than just to build them all in one place. I mean, when you build them all in one place, they have an easier time getting their food together. However, they have a lot harder time getting to the actual jobs. So, it's definitely a compromise you have to find sooner or later. We're gonna build a second one of our... You know, I think I'm gonna make... I'm gonna make roads between every one of those. Just because these are so big now, I think I wanna have roads between all of them. So people can travel faster. I mean, we have seen it in the past. Most of the actual... Most of our actual citizens just walk over the crop fields. They don't even care about them. How far are you? Almost done, huh? Very interesting. So it is early spring. I would love to get this uh, crop field done sooner rather than later so we can actually start planting crops pausing the game what do we have we have wheat and we have beetroots interesting i'm gonna start with wheat um so there is something that i'm not quite sure about i'm gonna have only two on these for now for efficiency purposes where are my farmers here oh they're on the other side oh, wait 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 cleric herdsman Oh snap. Oh snap. I didn't see the scroll bar. There are my farmers. Oh, that's. I, I can't even see, really scale this, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, oh well. We'll have to work around it for now. So let's close this off completely. Have a walkway all the way around. Um, I also checked out better sizes for our pastures, but this is far in the future. So I'm not going to talk about those quite yet. We still have a lot of things to accomplish before we get to this point. But yeah, what I was going to talk about is the wheat. So what we can do now, we have a miller. I think we have a windmill in one of these. I have to find my way around here. There's a windmill. Looks really cool, by the way. Um, which can make our wheat into flour. And then you can have a bakery over here which can make breads out of the flour. However, I'm not entirely sure how much good that does us. Because as we all saw, wheat already serves as a food source for our citizens. And the question is, at which point is it worth building a windmill and a bakery? Because it takes additional steps to process the wheat. So does it make it more or more... I don't know, does it help make it more sustainable? Not sustainable, what's the word? Satisfying? No, that's also not the word. But does it does it help? Does it does it make it wheat more valuable when I process it? Does it give more hunger to the to people? Uh, that's the question I haven't found an answer to quite yet. But things are coming along. Let's see, how are we doing down here? Um I think we can speed the time up to at least twice the speed now, since we have stuff to do for our laborers. Let's check the farmers. Not yet. Um, are any people already born? I th oh, no, I think that's what we started with, right? Maybe one children. One child, no, one children. Um, let's build houses. We want more population. So the question is, if I do it like that, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, I can just calculate it, can't I? Twelve, that means I have three space everywhere, which is kind of annoying. I guess 16 by 16 would have been a better choice, however, I presume it's less efficient if I would do it like that. I think the way we have to do it is we won't have a perfect grid in our in our city. And it hurts me already to say that because you guys know I love me my symmetry. Um, 
I think we'll figure something out. I'm pretty sure we'll have to figure something out. Okay, I'm gonna leave this area pretty empty for now. Let's see if we can build a gatherer's hut. Gatherer's huts are actually one of the most effective food, early on at least, uh, food sources. And even later in the game, if you have a lot of space, the gatherer's huts are really, really helpful. And you want them to be in an area with, with a very, very dense forest. So I think almost back here. I don't want them. Ooh. You know what? Let's take a closer look at the trees again. Let's go on this level and see if we find areas that are mostly pine trees and mostly bigger pine trees. I'm pretty sure this mod is included here. Um, this almost looks like it, but not quite. Let's see, I want to find one of these really old forests. But I'm, th I'm pretty sure they are exclusively pine trees. So if we find one of those, I think a gatherer would be way more efficient. This no, 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 they are far more rare than I initially thought. Could have sworn I saw more of those in the test worlds I created. I didn't actually play the mod pack, but I, ooh, firewood is low. Okay, how's our, how is our woodcutter coming along? Okay, we have the foresters lodged, so let's get some foresters. Let's, let's make it two for now. We don't have as much of a population to give away currently. And I guess the next thing built will be our woodcutter. Very important since we don't have a single piece of firewood. And especially with the wooden houses in the beginning, we're gonna need a whole bunch. What we probably also should do is collect all the stone. Let me zoom out a bit. Uh, whenever laborers have some time, I want the stone to be collected. So we can move on to uh, stone houses fairly soon. I tried that last time too, but this time I want to really focus on it because I mentioned it in the past, stone houses use half the fuel that wooden houses use, so that's nice. I don't know about brick houses. Of course, most of the stats that are released um, regarding Banished are for the vanilla game. And I actually don't know much about the modded resources at all. But I think that's what makes it interesting, right? It's always nice to not know everything. Um, and to be honest with you, I have no clue how to even create brick at this point. We have the quarry. Maybe you can tell the quarry to produce bricks instead of stone. Glass works. Wow, we can't even produce glass. Shore house. Oh, sand and clay can be dug up for further processing. So you might have to build those along the shoreline. Yes, that's where you get your brick, I would have I would guess. Another very underestimated food source, as we learned at the end of last season, are fishermen's huts. So I want to get one of those in here as soon as possible. Especially in places like this, where there's really a lot of water around. They are very, very effective. Um, probably the best. Maybe this placement could even be better if I can figure it out. Maybe like that. Come on. Hmm. This is a lot of water. But I can't really place it anywhere here. Look at that. Doesn't want me to. Okay, let's place it down here then. In this case, I don't have to build a bridge right off the bat anyways. We're gonna build this guy here. It's gonna be far away. So what we want is... Okay, let's connect this up. Let's do... It like so. I mean, they will walk diagonally for now. But later we will have way more um, buildings here in the way. So that's not happening. I might overdo it a little bit with all the... Oh, oh, oh. What are you doing? Lock limit? Who told you to do that? We're not gonna have a lock limit. I don't know who told you that, but this is uh, not how we work here. We need a woodcutter in place so we can finally get some firewood for the winter. We are in early summer already and let's see, maybe we can get some of these guys going. We need more farmers for that, up to four. And I think I'm gonna leave it to that for now. So humble beginnings, as it usually is in Banished. And now I think we have to wait to get a little bit of a higher 
population. But yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of our second season of Banished. I'm really looking forward to getting into it again. And it's gonna be very stressful in the beginning, but later on I think it's gonna be a lot of fun again. So I hope you guys... Oh, that's not a, that's not a dirt road. I hope you guys are ready for it. And if you enjoyed it, leave a like. And I hope to see you all again in the next episode of Banished. I'll catch you all later.